On this episode of Homemade Chow, today we're going to change the battery cables on this golf cart. Stick around, I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so here's what I did. Um, being Mr. Instant Gratification, right, I wanted to hurry up and get some of these items so I can start working on it right away. And um, here, these are ring terminals that I picked up. <laughs> I, I went to three different stores because each store that I went to only carried two packs of these and of course these are for two gauge wires i needed the 5 16 inch hole and uh, again instant gratification guy didn't think i wanted to wait for it online just thought it was funny to show you the difference is these are five dollars and 49 cents for each pack of these right so i'm already at eleven dollars here before tax these were 4.99 at o'reilly's a little a dollar cheaper for two packs here and then at AutoZone they were $6.69 a piece so you know you can do the math pretty quickly 11 10 makes 21 plus another 14 or 13 38 roughly so you're at 34 almost 35 dollars after tax for and I didn't even have enough right I need a total of seven packs if you will so I'm still missing a set but uh, and there's still no heat shrink. I wanted to be able to put the heat shrink on there and you'll see. So my wife reminds me, why don't, my wife says, why don't we just get it online? So I looked it up and look at this. I've got two packs here and we bought heat shrink. That's they're, uh, five feet rolls of heat shrink of the right size. And inside these packs, inside this pack, there are 10 of literally the same they're the same thing. 10 ring terminals and it comes with heat shrink. Now I wanted to get this heat shrink because on a couple of cables I'd like to make the red and black a little longer and I've got a little plan hopefully but it'll work to uh, to make it look a little better. But this was just over $10 for the whole thing. So for $20 I've got more than enough to do my project, whereas here I didn't even have enough and I was already at $35. So again, once again, the internet, oh, and by the way, I got this delivered in two days. I probably could have found one to deliver it even faster, but it was close to the weekend. So uh, yeah, do your shopping. The internet wins again over the local stores. I get it, it makes sense if you guys were just gonna do one terminal, or like, you know, most people don't need as many as what we're doing. Go to your local store, perfectly fine, makes sense. But if you're planning on making upgraded battery cables, like this video is going to show you, definitely go online. It's much better. So as you remove your battery, your old battery cables, make sure you, re you label them so you know which one goes where when you replace with the new ones. In other words, if I'm making cable one here, I need to make sure that I'm making cable one and I can put it right back in my first slot. Cable two, cable three, cable four, however you want to label them, just make sure you're going to label them in the same order so you can put them back in the same order. So I've got my battery cables here laid out and marked. These are just the cables that go from battery to battery and I've identified the negative and positive. And uh, make sure I measure this exactly the way it needs to be with my new two gauge wire. So a quick note, this terminal needs one half an inch of open copper. So you're gonna wanna cut this insulation off a half an inch deep so it fits in perfectly and rests in nice and tight. So it fits in nice and tight in there. When you crimp it down, there's no exposed copper on this side. Uh, I'll put a heat shield on there anyway. I'm sorry, a uh, heat shrink wrap on there anyway. But you still want to make it as uh, clean as possible with no exposed copper. So here we are. Mark half an inch. And then use a razor knife. Cut it through the shield. the shielding so now you got 
nice and tight fit perfect this goes right there and then stops perfect you want to make sure the length is accurate this terminal is different size than that terminal so you just want to make sure you line up the hole you know where this needs to be you can just measure this out by rolling it along this until you get the exact measurement that you need now I'm choosing to cut this with the hacksaw this gauge wire is very very it's uh it is really heavy it's not like some of the other wire where it's uh you know thinner strands this is heavy strands i don't have a cable cutter so this gives me a clean cut every time something else you need to think about these terminals are flat because they need to rest on the top of the batteries. When you put your terminals back on, the new ones, and you crimp them on, you don't want one crimped this way and then the other crimped you know, that way or upside down. You really want to be mindful of the orientation. You want to be mindful of the orientation of the, uh, the terminals. And normally, normally, I would put the heat shrink tubing on top first but this is large enough to go over the entire terminal so I wouldn't have to worry about it for these crimpers they're adjustable so you have the ability to change by pressing this in you can change these different settings for different gauge wires uh, I've got it set on two for my two gauge wire all you got to do is just pop that uh, terminal right in here, the, car, the brass terminal right in here, and then crimp it down. The first one doesn't matter, the orientation, because the second one will line up with the first terminal. Slowly pinch down on it so it gets a grab, and then once it bites, Press it down the rest of the way. Let it sit there for just a second. Take it out. And there we are. Crimped nicely on there. Very, very tight. Second, again, match that orientation. I like, since it's going to be covered heat, with heat, heat shrink anyway, I just like to make a mark on here so I know that they're lined up right so when I put it in here once it bites on there I can ensure that I'm lined up with my mark press down and there we are excellent and I'll keep these oriented with each one that I've replaced. Okay, so I've got them all made. Terminals have all been crimped. They've all been uh, lined up with the proper length. And I've already dry fit them, just put them on there to make sure that they fit. They fit perfectly fine. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of the heat shrink to the proper sides. Some of these I may use the, um, the longer spool here just to give them a little bit more length to make them look nicer. Not sure yet, but uh, just going to use a heat gun and heat shrink these on. So a couple things, this heat gun gets really, really hot. So on these small ones, I would not recommend you hold it in your hand. You know, maybe use a pair of pliers to give yourself a little bit of extra distance here. But definitely keep this away from you and don't put it near anything that's going to be uh, impacted by heat. But another thing I want to make mention, if you recall, I made sure I put a label on each one of my cables, but I also put which side was going to go to the negative terminal and which side went to the positive terminal. So that way I know what color heat shrink to put on the new cable.
that lines up with it. This is the three to one heat shrink, so it shrinks down to uh, two thir one third of its size, or one third of its original size. As you can see here, it's on there. Still pretty hot to the touch, so you might not want to touch that right away, let it cool down. I don't know if you can see that or not, but this also has some glue on the inside to help protect it, make it watertight. You can, there's a little glimmer, a little shimmer rather on the edge there. You can see the glue, the adhesive reacting. So now we just do this for all of them and we should be good to go. All right, so here we are now. The battery cables have been installed. You can see how they're connected here. I haven't done this one yet. I'll do that when I change out the controller and the motor. So that'll be next. I did not change the negative and positive going to the controlling unit. So, um, but you can see I've done it here. It looks sharp. I like the green color. Uh, I happen to have this cable. Uh, a buddy of mine actually gave it to me. So we're just laying around. We took it, that two gauge cable. And uh, yeah, it really fits nicely. Looks good, looks sharp. Something else, again, I just put these batteries in a little over a month ago and I checked the liquid in all these batteries and the cells were down. I actually wound up putting a little over a half a gallon of, dis of uh, distilled water in these batteries. So remember, always check your batteries and the water level if you still have lead acid batteries in there. So thank you for watching. Um, I think it looks great, the colors. I'm going to... Uh, in another video, change out the controller and change out the motor in this, and we'll see how it runs after that. But uh, feel free to leave in the comments down below any questions you might have. It's an easy little project, but definitely something that's going to be needed if you want to increase the speed and you're going to increase the amperage and the power of, uh, of your golf cart. All right, I hope that video helped you out. Feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. Thanks so much for watching.